Cherry Pearls Podcast. This is episode 100. 100! Uh, woo! Woo! That is crazy. So we're wearing our sheepy ears. To so celebrate. Celebration ears. Yeah, we're, we're part of the flock now. So we are uh, the Cherry Pearls Podcast. This is episode 100, and we are a knitting and spinning fiber crafty yarny podcast coming to you from outside New Orleans, Louisiana, and we are super glad that you're joining us today. So I am Robin. I'm Mary. You can find me as Teeny Button on Instagram and Ravelry, and you can find my hand dyed yarn at teenybuttonstudio.com. And I am Snippin' Full on Ravelry, and on Instagram, I am Cherry Pearls Marin. And we have a podcast group on Ravelry. It is Cherry Pearls Podcast. It'll be linked in the box below. And that's where you can find the show notes for this episode, as well as links to everything we're going to talk about and all that good stuff. yep So, um, we don't have anything special planned for our 100th uh 100th episode. We do have a question if you want to hang around at the end. I think that'd be fun to see what people's answers are. Yeah. So, um, real quick, upcoming show news. Um, the past couple weeks, or the past couple episodes, we've talked about SSK and how I will be the one there, but uh, things have changed, and I am no longer going by myself or just with Larry. Uh, a waiting list spot opened up. And now I'm going. So mom is going. So, um, so no Larry. No Larry, which he's not. He's not torn up about it. <laughs> um, but it's good because this way you'll get the full experience of it. Oh, Whereas he'd be going good. along just to tag along. So. Yeah. He would just be coming to help you with the, the uh, market yeah. thing. Um, so that is the Super Summer Knit Together. That is hosted by the Knit Girls, and that is in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, the market date is Saturday, the 20th of July, and um, we'll be there vending. So come and say hi if you are in the Nashville area. Uh, it is open to the public in the afternoon. So um, there's going to be some awesome vendors there if you have time in your local or you want to make a little bit of a drive. It's definitely worth the drive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's some really great, great people going to yes. be there. And um, we ha will have the link for the Super Summer Knit Together, SSK, in the show notes uh, in our Ravelry group. Yes. Um, also, a new event has popped up for us. We are going to be at Hill Country Weavers for a trunk show that is in Austin, Texas. And uh, that will be August 23rd through the 25th. And um, that is particularly special because the 24th, which is Saturday, is my birthday. So um, they have a whole list of events planned. So we're going to be doing a trunk show. I'm going to have tons of yarn. I'm going to have um, some new colorways specially dyed for them. I'm going to have some new colorways that will be going to the shop later that are part of my regular line. Um, they're going to be having some classes and a fun party. So if that is something that interests you and you are in Texas or the, not just in Texas, Texas is pretty big, huh? Uh, you were in the Austin area, and you would like to come, uh, we would love to see you. So, yep. Cool beans. Absolutely. Um, that's all of the where to find us locally stuff. Um, we do have one knit along, or I have a knit along. That is the Teeny Button Studio Harry Potter knit along. You can find the details for that over in the Teeny Button Studio Ravelry group. Um, but basically the rundown is you knit a Harry Potter project in a Teeny Button Studio yarn, or any project in a Teeny Button Studio Harry Potter yarn. So again, full rules for that will be linked down below. Um, it's a quarter leaning along. We're now in the third quarter. I need to announce prizes for last quarter. So it's a lot of fun if you want to come join. The rules won't be linked down below, but the link, the link to, to the, the group, group will be linked The link down. to the thread will be linked. Yeah, and you find the rules there. It's there. Go look for it. <laughs> so I think we're ready to want to finish objects. Sure, sure. You got some? I've got one. I've, yeah, I've got a bunch of little ones and one big one. Do the little ones first. Okay. So since I got into SSK... Um, I wasn't, you know, on the late side, I wasn't able to participate in any of the knit-alongs that have um, occurred because of, you know, it, they've already, they started, what, January, I think everybody got in on the first round. I'm so. bad. I don't do knit-alongs, even though I really should. Well, so. I th but I think that's when everybody found out that yeah. they got in was in January. So, um, anyway, one way to earn tickets to get door prizes is by participating in the charity knit-along, and that one will run all the way up until the day that it starts. Yeah. So I have been knitting hats, so I have a hats, bunch. Hats, hats, so hats, hats, So one, hats. just my basic hat. These all have a rolled brim on them because I'm trying to <laughs> crank them <laughs> out. <laughs> so um, this is five. Then I've got six. Oops, here's your on here. Seven, eight. And nine so I have nine hats that um, these will either be um, preemie hats depending on the size or hats for the homeless or hats for cancer patients mm -hmm. um, depending on somebody how, somewhere will wear a hat. how the girls want to distribute things somebody has a hat somewhere. so yeah hats and that's 
coming later works in progress. I didn't bring them, but I am working on more hats. Just imagine more of these in, in progress. In these colors. So. <laughs> Was it Karen? Um, well, um, there's a, multiples. Right now, they're um, Karen Simply Soft in, uh, I think it's Ocean, which is this color, and Iris, which is this color. It's pretty purple. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And then I've got some new ones that I've started another cake, and this one is, I think it's Red Heart. Doesn't say. I know, because I just started this, and mm. I... And, we were supposed to podcast last week, and so I had already written up show notes, and I didn't change them. But I think it's um, Red Heart Soft, but I have to go and look up what the color is. It'll but be in the show notes. It will be in the show notes by the time those are posted in the Ravelry group. Yeah. So I will go next. I have a pretty big finished object that y'all probably have seen me wearing. So this is a test knit for a pattern that is coming out this week. I believe she said Friday, but I could be wrong. Um, so that would be, what, the 12th? Don't ask me to do the math. The 11th and the 12th. So today is Monday the 8th. So Tuesday the 9th. It'll be out before Wednesday this weekend. Wednesday the 10th. Thursday the 11th. Friday I have in my 12th. head Friday the 11th, but that doesn't make sense. So it's either Friday or it's Thursday. <laughs> but anyway, this is the Rift T. Be this, out later this week. Yes. This is the Rift T. It's a pattern by Jacqueline Seaslack. Am I saying that right? I'm not sure. Seaslack. Why don't you, uh, yeah, you, then they can see that it's a crop. Yes, it's a little cropped sweater or cropped top. It is knit from the bottom up. It has this twisted rib, and it also has a split hem. Split hem. I like how she does the detail on the side here. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, and it also goes up the armpit. Y'all can look at my armpits. It's kind of hard to tell. But um, Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got the armpit shot today. So I really like, I really enjoy knitting it. It goes really fast. It is knit in a DK weight. Um, this is my 50-50 wool cotton. I believe the pattern is written for sport, but she suggested um, I do the DK because it is it has the cotton in it. So I did get gauge on the needle size that she requested in the DK, which is interesting because usually I knit looser. But, yeah. you know, gauge is weird and it lies. So, you know. Um, so this is my Breezy DK. I don't know if I said this. Breezy DK is a 50-50 wool cotton blend. It's a new base. And this colorway is called Enchanted Peach. It is a new colorway. I'm trying to show you. <laughs> it's hard to show stuff whenever you're wearing it's it. It's peach. It's peach, yeah. <laughs> um, so it has instructions for a v-neck. I put the v-neck in the front. There's um, the boat neck is in the back. I'm, just trust me. Um, you can see it coming up the back of your neck. Yeah, so you don't have to... <laughs> there's instructions if you want to do both of them, the boat neck, or if you want to put the v-neck in the back. There's also... Um, Two or three, I believe it's three different um, bust dart sections. I did the EF bust dart, and you can see my German short rows are kind of like funky a little bit. You really can't see on camera, but you see where my German short rows are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to practice those a little more, I think. But I, I appreciate that they're included. And then there's also a section on how to do a bicep adjustment um, if you need more room in the bicep or if your gauge is off, but you like the fabric and you need a little bit more room in the, in the armpit or in the... the shoulder arm area so it's a great written it's a greatly it's a good pattern it's a great pattern it's a great pattern yeah i was gonna say a greatly written pattern but that doesn't sound like proper grammar it's a well-written pattern um this is actually my first pattern i've done by her but i do want to make the ursa sweater and the sprouted shawl i actually have both of those patterns um to make in the future so i really enjoyed this i actually I think some of the test knitters are on their second and third one just because it's so quick. I think it took me less than two weeks from start to finish. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I like the 50-50 wool cotton. I was able to throw it in the dryer for a little bit, and it really helped to soften it up and pop the stitches really well. And it's really cute. I was One of the things I was worried about crop tops, Pearl's at my feet. She's, she's looking up like she wants to jump on. Yeah, I know. Um, one of the things I was worried about crop tops is how am I going to wear it. But I wore it out today with this little tank top underneath it, and it's totally fine. Um, I wore, I have a striped maxi, maxi dress, and I wore that for the, pro, um, like, finished object photos. You better not ah, chewing on chewing that. The, chewing yeah. the plastic. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Really so it looks, top? it looks cute over a dress, it looks cute over a tank top, and all that good stuff. So I really this enjoyed it. Cute. Um, and I will link to it whenever it is published this week. So I highly suggest it. And I appreciate being able to test knit it. This is my job. This, I love this job. This is one of my favorite jobs. Yeah. 
I could do this job. Oh, look at a little wrinkly it. nose. Her nose almost matches the color of your sweater. Ooh, look at that. Matchy, matchy. What you got? Oh, okay. Well, I have a finished object. This is the Inara that's wrap. so pretty. I love that. I think that's correct. Sounds right. It's, um, Ambobrine? No, laminate wrap. Oh, okay. Okay, make sure I'm showing the right side. So this is some yarn that I bought at Rhinebeck. This is Alpaca Yarn Company, their Mini Madness set in the colorway Viva Las Vegas. So that's the colorful part. And then the um, gray section area is Mad Tosh Sock in Boxcar. So um, it's a really long shawl that kind of goes through the, you know, uh, different colors of the rainbow here. Um, I showed it in the last podcast. My original intent was to um, have three repeats of each color, and I would have had enough yarn to do three repeats of each color, but I ran out of the gray. So that's why I ended up stopping. So I only have, I think, yeah. So I ended up being one short so the no two short so these the orange and then the red orange are the two that I didn't get to repeat three times but it's really really long I really enjoy it it's it was a very fun wrap um, a, a great pattern to knit and um, I love it what's your opinion what you think you want to wear it I don't know mom <laughs> she said everything that's good on me yeah Just coming to you. He built my heart. Yeah, I love so this pattern. That's my only finished object that's really huge. Is it written for minis or is it written for two colors? It's no, it's written for minis. Okay. Um well I don't know about minis. I can't remember how how um how big the minis need to be. But yeah, I guess anything less than a half skein is considered a mini. What's considered a mini? Yeah, I guess. Where do you draw that line? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember um, how big each of the... Was that 100, 100 yards? Yeah, I'm, I don't remember how big. Um, that'd be about 20 grams. I'm, it might tell you when you go look at my project page, I have the yarn linked. So I know that I... I mean, I've got like this much left of the gray. So it, that... You're playing yarn chicken? Well, I knew I couldn't... I wasn't positive that I could get another section plus, you know, you've got the gray that's on the edge for the bind off. Yeah. So I wasn't sure that I could get that in. So, well, two more sections plus that. So that's why I went ahead and, and stopped where I did. But it definitely uses a full skein of the gray color. And that was a 100 gram skein. That was a full skein, not a mini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Yeah. So I love it. That. It looks amazing. It, it, was fun to knit, and I'm going to enjoy wearing it whenever it gets cool. That one day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that two weeks where it's not <laughs> blistering hot outside. So, um, ready to move on to works in progress? Sure. Because I didn't have any. Well, I have You that. have one now because you left it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. an issue. <laughs> so, this is my Bennett Sister Charlotte. This is a pattern by Lindsay Fowler. And I got a lot of work done on it at Houston Fiber Fest because we haven't podcasted since Houston Fiber Fest. So I did get a lot of work done on it at the show. So I think I was just about here whenever I showed y'all last. So I've done that much of the shawl. So it is a rectangle shawl knit end to end. This is not a rectangle. This is a triangle. I was going to say, where's the triangle oh rectangle come in? This is a triangle shawl. It's I'm knit sorry. end to end. And I'm on the decrease section, obviously. And I love it. I kind of like the striping it's doing. Yeah, it looks pretty. It looks a lot more subtle in real life than it does on camera. It really shows how it's knit. Yeah, it's very cool. You know, it's not one that's top down, it's side mm -hmm. to side. So yeah. you can see how the yarn is, is striking yeah. up. Um, so I am using my own yarn. This is a sample. So um, soft. What happened is I accidentally cut one of the skeins when I was dyeing this yarn. When I was cutting off the ties to skein it. So I'm like, well, I guess I have a new yarn. <laughs> I guess I have a new skein. So I'm like, I might as well knit this because it's gorgeous. But the um, sample shawl only has it knit half in the mohair, but I like it with the full mohair all the way across. So the main color is Tea at Hagrid's, which is this kind of cream and mauve color, and it is on a lush MCN. And the contrast color is Rosemerida, which is, again, a dusty sort of mauve rose color. And I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's potato chip knitting. This is kind of like... 
my grab and go knitting whenever we're at like knit group or something. Yeah. But um, it was a great knitting for the show because I just like kept going back and forth and it was well, easy you, to pick up and put down. Yeah, you could set it down to talk to customers and then um, pick it back up when yeah. you get time. So I'll probably bring it to SSK um, just because that's also a retreat and retreat knitting is good too because you want to be able to pick it up and set it down and sure. all that kind of stuff and carry on a conversation while you're knitting. So I did really enjoy it and I think I will be doing the tassels. Oh, I love good tassels. I do too. Yeah. I was unsure about the thalia, but now that I have the thalia with the tassels, I'm like, yeah. So, so you can do the tassel in both yarns? I'm not sure. I don't know how a mohair would hold up in a tassel. I don't know. That's why I was asking. Hmm. We'll see. I'll, I'll Anybody know? Cross a bridge when I get to it. Anybody yeah. done a tassel with the uh, uh, mohair? I'm very curious to find out. So it's a pretty good size. It's also 100% in garter. Well, not 100% except for the square at the bottom. Um, but it'll block out. It'll stretch real good. So I may need somebody to come help me do some furious blocking. I'd love to block. But uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. Yeah, it's a great pattern. And I would knit it again. And I think I would also do the mohair all the way across again because I like how it looks. So you're happy with the project. Yep. That's always a good thing. You want to show your work in progress now? Oh, so my knitting at Houston Fiber Fest was this pair of socks. Robin's show colorway this year was this gray color, which is Catstro's. And that. then she um, was alter um, offering two um, coordinating colors, which is this orange color right here, which is currently named Tangerine Dream. It's being renamed to Water Orange because it looks just like the Whataburger color. And then this blue color right here, which is Cobalt. So, um, as I'm knitting them, <laughs> we have an issue with these socks. Well, Robin wanted me to tr finish the socks so that she could hang them up at the show, but I'm not as fast of a knitter as Robin is. So, um, I got, usually I knit my socks concurrently. They're on two separate needles, but I knit them both at the same time. But she wanted me to go ahead and finish one, and she wanted it finished the way she normally fits, uh, the length that she normally goes with her socks. What she started this year at a Houston Fiber Fest, which turned out to be a really, really great idea, was she offered sock sets. Mm -hmm. So um, the main color was 50 grams, mm -hmm. and then she offered two um, 20 gram minis for heels and toes. Yeah. And I think Robin didn't do the math. No, the math did not happen. <laughs> and this I can't knit the socks the same length because That's all that's left. you have less of the main color than you normally yeah. have. So I finished this sock and then I started on this one and I've run out of yarn and as you can see they're not going to be the same length. So I have dropped these off to Robin so that she can decide how she wants to do this. Yeah. I'm assuming what you're going to do is pull this back and take some of the yarn and put it on this one and make them the same length. That is what I'm assuming. Yeah. I can't decide if I want to unravel the orange or if I want to try to graft it. I would unravel it. I would unravel it. So you're the one who's going to be knitting it again, so. I don't think Maybe so. Maybe not. I knit it once. I don't know if I'm knitting it twice. You know I knit ribbing three times? That doesn't sound like fun to you? Mm, I kind of want to move on to another project. Yeah. I did what you told me to do. This was a show sample. Whoops. I followed the directions of the dyer. So my job Yeah, but you, you didn't take into account that the dyer's an idiot. That's your problem. Yeah, but I took into the account that the dyer's better at math than I am. Not that much better, no. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking. So if you bought one, one of Robin's sock sets, either lay out your yarn. Yeah, well, that's what I recommended everybody do whenever they bought it. And did. I didn't do it myself. So, yeah. you know. Well, you didn't have a scale with us. But mm -hmm. even if you weigh out your yarn, you're not guaranteed for them to be exactly the same length because, you know, you've got some variances. I mean, yeah. my scale will do to the gram, but I don't know if it does partial grams. Mine does. I I've seen some people, what they did is they striped the orange and the um, blue before they started. Like oh, then it top cute. down. Really smart. I think that's adorable. Well, okay, it must well now you can do that. In my brain... I don't know what she's doing. In my, you know what she's doing. In she's my, getting in a box. In my brain, I was like, well, there's 90 grams there, so I can knit the socks the way that I usually do, but the answer is But not. you're not using all of yeah. your this. But that would work. 
Yeah, it would work. You, I mean, you can still get a pair of this size out of that. You just because you have, you would have to stripe the red yeah. and blue at the top. Yeah, this is orange a orange um, and the blue. At the this top. is a learning experience for me. So, but the the sock sets did really well. Yeah, and is that going to be something going forward that you're going to start yes. offering? Yes, I actually have some sock sets that I have put together. I put them together for last Friday's update, and then I did not put them publish them. them. <laughs> so. They're gonna premiere. Pro, they're gonna debut at SSK. Will you be showing in them today? Just no. oh, okay. All right. So anyway, this is still a work in progress. Um, well, Whoops. stay stay tuned to see how they end up. I really love this color, though. I'm really happy. Yeah, with it. it's beautiful. It's you know, it was one of those things where you saw it in the skein. It was hard to tell what it was mm. going to look like knit up. But everybody who came by really loved the little yeah. blips of color. Yeah. So it's got orange and gray all the grays some yellows mm -hmm. some uh, really pretty teal blues pop up in there every once in a while so it's really really beautiful yeah and i am doing pre-orders for this colorway or dyed to order um probably until ssk so another excuse me another week but this is definitely using all of your yarn yeah do your math weigh your weigh your skeins <laughs> and account for your gauge this is why you knit them Concurrently. That's why you knit them concurrently. If, if I you were had, doing them two at a time, it wouldn't add this problem. Well, if I had, but you wanted me to hurry up and get one out so you could have shown it as a sample. But it but, didn't work because you finished it like right before you packed up. I mean, I was doing like I was doing my last row ribbing. I think as they said, the show is over. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you know you can knit a sock in a show. Well, I started. Well, no, I didn't knit it at the show. We start. We started when we left the, on the trip. Yeah. So, like, I drove first, and Robin put in the toe because she likes a certain toe. It's not the toe I do. So I drove until you finish the toes, and then we switched, and then I drove into Houston after that. Like, everybody needs to know that. The end. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with it. I just need to fix it. Yeah, need to I like the idea nature. of striping the top. I might See, do people that. are brilliant. People are very smart. So I have one more work in progress, and this is one y'all have seen before but not in its current form. So it is in my sheepy bucket bag from Mrs. Moog, which is like my favorite bag in the whole world. One of my favorite bags in the whole world. Um, so this is my So Faded sweater that you may remember for long time viewers because I started this sweater last year and got to the sleeve separation and realized, oh crap, I screwed it up. So I frogged the entire thing and I've now restarted it. So this is the same sweater, just a different knit. <laughs> Probably looks exactly the same, but I did do so faded part two. So faded part two, yeah. I did do the alternating helical method of knitting to stripe. The that skeins. was one of the things that was bothering you too. You yeah. had that line, and you yeah. wanted to get rid of that. And that was before you knew about the helical knitting. Yes. So um, I am almost where I was before I ripped it out. And one of the things that I wanted to fix is that the so the instructions for the so faded, it's not like this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's not line to line, like, oh, you fade here. Like, you have to do some math. You have to measure how long you want your sweater to be, and then you have to divide it by this and multiply it by this and, like, figure out how long you need to knit each color. So it's not a sweater for me. Yeah. So I did not do that. I'm just like, eh, I'll change it whenever. And then I hated where I changed it because it was a very awkward location where I changed the color and I had a big line across somewhere. I didn't want to have a line. So I've already changed the first color, and I'm knitting with the second color. And I'm very close to the sleeve separation. I think I might be like two rows away. So I'm using Knox Yarn Company. Um, this is one of five. Pearl's favorite yarns. Pearl, lately. like, okay. That skein did not look like that whenever I started using it. I just want to let everybody know the skein did not look like this. It was in a nice ball, nice cake. Yeah. It was caked very nicely, but it has been carried throughout the house. This was in a cat play thing. And then, um, according to Dad, he got up for work one day. And Pearl and was leading the others on a merry chase with the skein of yarn. The sweater and a couple of skeins were all wrapped around the kitchen chairs and dining room table. Yeah. And um, what has happened is that somebody knows how to open this bag. I'm telling you, somebody knows how to get this bag open. Well, you know how to open the bag. Somebody with, with a tail knows how to open this bag. So, that's the issue. I have to tie it at night. Otherwise, she'll open it. So, um, it's all... You could put it up high. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. Um, this is all <laughs> Knox Yarn Company. I believe this is her 7525, but I have since lost all of the ball bands. So, I think... It will be linked in the, yeah. in the show notes because 
you have it on your project page. Yeah. So this is the Ford Anglia colorway. That was my first color. This one is Luna. Luna. It's got some neon in it, but it's not really showing up that great. Um, next color, this is called Love and Monsters, which I believe is a Doctor Who colorway. Um, this one is Kitten Party, which is my favorite colorway name. Well, now we know our pearls attached Yeah, to but it. she didn't grab this one. And then well, this she one, wanted to have a party with all of them. This one is Memento Mori, which I think is a Penny Dreadful colorway. And I actually, the reason why I don't know all the colorway names is because some of these were gifts from Danielle and some of these I bought. Um, but I'm they go really well together. I'm really happy with them. So I have my swatch in here. I'll show you. I haven't shown you all my swatch in a while since I was working on it last. So that's how the sweater will look. With the dark color on the bottom and the medium, like, medium to light to dark, I think, will look good. I like it. So my issue is that I did not, this swatch was not done with these needles. I think I was using my Licka needles, but now I'm using Chiagu's. So we will see if that does anything funky to my gauge, which it probably will, but I'm taking a risk. So I'm knitting the largest size, which right now is 55 inches, I think. So I'm going to, that's going to be fine for the bust, but I think I need to add some stitches for the hips. I know Andrew Mowry's in the process of um, updating it. Yeah, expanding expanding, expanding her pattern sizing, but um, I wanted to knit this now, so. Um, well, by the time you get to it, maybe she will have it down. Maybe, I doubt it, but we'll see. I think she said maybe the fall or the winter, but um, I'm just going to add stitches. Yeah, I'm just going to add stitches and hope for the best. You do what you've done in the past. Yeah, so um, I'm really enjoying it. I really like just Milo stuck in it and like you do your increases and then once, I'll some stuff yeah, once you do the sleeve stitches it's literally just zoom 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 and you just need to pay attention to where you switch so colors yeah yep so that is all my worst in progress you just had the one I just had the one and then the ones I left at home but then they're more hats so you kind of get just you, use your imagination you can figure that one out you want to do um throw me something mister sure sure what you got um where is it right here oh so some of this, so we doing what we got at Houston first, sure, or sure. otherwise. That good. Let's do it. Okay, so my first purchase at Houston Fiber Fest was this beautiful Yay. skein from Tumbleweed Yarns. The colorway is Stroh's, and it um, mimics the throwback jerseys that uh, Houston used to play, used to wear, not used to play. Which uh, when I saw this in her Instagram post. Um, before the show, I'm like, I've got to have this. And that is the Houston Astros. Yes. For people who may not. I'm sorry. He is familiar. For yes. baseball. Because yes. I'm really bad about that. I'm like, are the Giants football? Are they soccer? I'm not really, but sometimes. Yeah, I know. Okay. So um, this is her Aurora fingering weight, and it is an 80-20 merino nylon blend. Mm -hmm. Do we do all of my? Okay. Doesn't matter. So... Then the next thing that I bought was this beautiful skein. Ooh. This is Reading Rainbow, and it's by Night, Night Owl Fibers. There we go. And it is her Barn Owl sock. And like I said, the colorway is Reading Rainbow, and it is her 75-25 blend. So that's going to be a beautiful rainbow-striped sock. The purple is really standing out in that one. Yeah, me. isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And then... The next thing that I bought was this. Oh my gosh, so this is adorable. This is a Notions pouch by Paisley Ducky. And it's a, like a little pair of panties and it's got a little zipper on top. And then there's the lining. And I just thought this was hysterical. Robin told me about um, these little panty Notions mm -hmm. pouches and um, she bought one too. And I, I traded for it. Well, you but got one got too, one, I should yeah. put it that way. And I just thought it was really cute. She does teacup little sock bags, too, or little Notions bags. They're really cute. Yeah, she's, re she's really She has really good ideas. And the last thing that I ended up getting at Houston Fiber Fest was this skein of yarn. This was not bought. This was given to me by the booth helper in Tumbleweed Yarns booth. Um, he was so very sweet. Uh, when I went to go buy the Astros um, skein, he um, asked me if I knew how to fix a drop stitch in his scarf, and I told him what I would do if I, you know, if it were my scarf, and offered to fix it. And he gave me the skein for doing so. Aww. It was very, very sweet. He didn't have to do that, 
and this is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this is the Colorway Mystery Machine, which is, um, I'm assuming, Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo. related. <laughs> and I can't wait to use it. It That's is so absolutely pretty. beautiful. I love the jewel kind of gold, uh, the green. I do the, too. Yeah. I just, it's beautiful. And it's also in the 80-20 base. I think they must have remembered that that's the base mm -hmm. that I bought in the Strohs colorway. Yay. So that's what I got at Houston. So I was similarly restrained. And I got, actually we got some of the same things, didn't we? We did. I got um, a skein from Night Owl Fibers again in her Barn Owl sock base, which is a 7525. And this colorway, some of you may recognize. I'll let you guess. It is Honey Harry, Dukes. I was going to say it's Harry Potter. Let's see if they could guess. But. It's Honey Dukes. So it is part of her Harry Potter collection. Um, and her mom, Brenda, was knitting with it. And I was like... I know. Those socks she was making. Beautiful. That's me. Yeah. I, um, I have another one of her club skeins. I have her Night Bus colorway. And I just love Harry Potter so much. And I love Harry Potter self-striping especially. So that is... Beautiful. Gorgeous. It's very springy to me, so I might wait for next, like, February, March-ish to cast it on. Or I might wait till next time we go to Universal Studio and, like, take a picture of it in front of Honey Dukes. Because I haven't ever been to um, Hogsmeade. I've been to the Diagon Alley portion, but I haven't been to the Hogsmeade portion. And I want to ride the new Hagrid's motorbike adventure. So, we're going to be going at some point, me and whoever wants to come with me. Whoever can rope into coming. Me and whoever. Whoever can, can put up with me for that long in a car. But I really enjoy how that looks. I really think it's really pretty. I know you're hoping it's Larry so you can knit the whole time. Yeah, Larry <laughs> drives the whole way to Orlando. I'm like, okay. No, I make Robin drive. So mean. So I got, it's got cat hair on it. I got a Notions pouch from Anna as well at Paisley Ducky. And this one has little, I call them Neapolitan kitties. They're kind of Neapolitan. They are. They are. And then the lining is just pink hearts. Yeah, those are hearts. <laughs> so that's what you think of when you see pearls. It is. Hearts. I think these are so cute. Somebody, somebody like, I think somebody said they were kind of like vulgar, but it's just like they're cute. Like, how is that vulgar? I don't know. People are funny. You know how people are. I, I think, think, they're, I think funny. they're adorable. I, I think, think they're funny. I think they're quirky and like ruffle. They're interesting. I, I, I like it. Super cute. So. And I have all my notions in it. They fit a ton of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a nice size bag. Yeah. And then I got one more thing. So, um, speaking of Orlando, I saw this at Diana Couture's booth. And I love her bags. I have one of her Serena bags, and then I have one of her yarn owls as well. I'm going to take the tag off. Um, so, these are her yarn owls. And it's got snaps on the top with a hole in the middle. So, you can put your cake in there. And then feed it through the top, and then you put the wrist strap on, and you can knit with the yarn feeding through the middle, which is genius. It's not catching on anything, because I know that with, yeah. even with the zipper bag, sometimes the yarn will catch on the zipper yeah. if you're pulling it a certain way. And I saw the castle, and I was like, this would be Cinderella. perfect for Disney World. Magic Kingdom. And, you know, walking around the park and knitting, which I've done. We always do that. Yeah. And we are going in September. Excuse me. And then I might be going again in October, and then we'll probably go again in February. So I have Disney trips lined up, so I need some Disney knitting project bags. So there you go. Very excited. I love her bags. She's so smart. Like she's so clever. Like I don't even think like her and her Such and Anna nice like the person. ideas. Yeah, they're both so nice. So yes, that's all I got at Houston. So and then we have one skein that came in that yes. we had ordered. Um, came in right before Houston. Yeah. So um, we got the same. But not the same base. So this is from Inked Sheep Fibers, and this is, excuse me, yours is sock. Mine's sock. Seventy-five twenty-five. Yeah. Wicked Sheep Four Ply, and mine is Basic Sheep DK Four Ply. So mine is uh, DK, but it's seventy-five twenty-five as well. And the colorway is not asking permission. And she was doing this as a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood. Is that? I think so. Yeah. Um, whenever they were doing all the crap a couple months ago with the abortion bans, which I'm sure is still going on, on some, to some degree. But um, we're like, for charity, for a good cause, for something we both believe in, and the colorway is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see those micro speckles. So I think I'm going to try some DK weight socks with mine. You can Interesting. Do socks. Oh yeah, I'm doing socks. I've never had a 7525 DK, and I've, I've seen it, but I just haven't ever like thought about getting it. Um... What is your like squishy bed socks? Hundred percent merino. Oh yeah, yeah. 
so the twenty five wasn't a blend. Nope. The twenty five percent nylon will give it enough durability for socks. So sure, sure. We will see. So I think that's everything except for our question. Yeah. Which is right there. Oh, right there. Huh. All right, you go. Yeah. Ask so a um, we were thinking uh, we haven't asked a question to our viewers in a while, and we were thinking since it's our hundredth um, episode. Um, what would you like a hundred of? Now, this is besides yarn because, uh, you know, a lot of people's first thought is, well, I'd like a hundred skeins of Volmies or, yeah. or whatever. But um, so what would you like a hundred things of? Um, so tell us in either in the comments here or uh, do you want to open up a thread in the um, Ravelry group? We can just do it in the show notes okay. for this episode. Let's just do it. Yeah, because this isn't a giveaway. This is just for fun. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just for fun. So we'll just, just let us know in the comments then. We won't yeah. open up a thread. What would you want 100 of? I'd like 100 extra days with my dad. Aww. But I don't want it to, I, I would like it to, I don't want it to be like Pet cemetery stuff. So I wouldn't want him to come back. It would be before. Mm. So, um, but yeah, or if if it if it can't be like something with a person, um, maybe a hundred Reese's cups. <laughs> I want a hundred cats. Larry would kill me. See, a hundred cats is good, but I can't imagine the number of litter boxes. <laughs> You're supposed to have one litter box per cat plus one, so it's a hundred and one litter boxes. Yeah, and and I mean. Yeah, I think that's where I, I think I would draw the line. Just thinking of the number of litter boxes I would have to do, I don't think I'd go 100. Cats. I'd want 100 stitch markers, so if I lose one, I know I always have one. I think I have that. <laughs> I think I have Probably that. do, yeah. <coughs> I yeah. want 100 stitch markers that I know where they are. How's that? Ah. <laughs> they're, always, they're always on my person, so whenever I need them, I always have them. So. I still think I know where mine are. But I do a lot of swaps. Are you swapping at SSK? I should. Every every single show we go to, uh, people ask me from Stitch Marker Swamp, and I'm like, man, I wish I was, and then I don't. You should. I'm going to. I should. Yeah, I probably will. I'll go to... It's always fun. It's always fun. Even if it's one that you, you know, you don't know if you're going to ever use it, because it just may it's not like be... It's like a souvenir. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, everybody has a certain type of Stitch Marker they like, you know, so... Some people if, go all out. Yeah. yeah. If, even if it's not something that you typically use, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, this is a great memento of that. And we've gotten some really cool Stitch Markers in the past. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. So let us know. What would you like a hundred of? Yeah. All right. So uh, that's all the knitting content that we have. I'm going to show what went into the shop update a few days ago. So if that does not interest you, please feel free to leave. So um, Friday was a Harry Potter shop update because it was the first shop update in July. And it was also a special shop update because I revealed or I um, introduced the Harry Potter birthday colorway Premier. for this year. Whatever you want to call it. Weird is a good word. Premiere sounds so fancy and special. It does. Um, last year I did Happy Birthday Harry, which will be coming again later this month, but I only did it for one day, and I find that that can be restrictive for people who don't have as much disposable income as others, and so they need to save up or budget accordingly to buy a skein of yarn. So this month I'm going to do this colorway all month, and then Happy Birthday Harry probably for a week or two at the end of the month. So this is the new colorway. This is called Birthday at the Burrow. Let's get it naked. Birthday at the Burrow, and it is a cream with neon speckles, and I really love it. I really like how it looks. So this one is on Comfy Erin, but it is dyed to order, so you can pick between um, okay, soft sock, tough sock, shimmer, solo singles, lofty lace, squish DK, and Comfy Erin, which is this one, which is an MCN. I think that's all of them. I could be missing one, but it's most of my bases. So you're just not doing the cotton bases. Yeah, it doesn't look the same on the cotton because of the dyes that I use. They, takes, they don't have yeah, a one to one ratio. Yeah, it doesn't take the dye the same. Yeah, um, and then I don't think I included Lush MCN fingering weight as well, but I probably should. I might go in there and add it because there's no reason not to. I have it. It's not like I just forgot. I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's the one I forgot. So, um, they are dyed to order, probably two to three week turnaround, especially because I'm dying for SSK right now, which we leave next week. Um, but you will get it before the end of the month if you order in the next couple of days, for sure. Um, but I'm dying them to order as we go. So, I had 40 
that were already done, those have gone. So um, I know I posted on my Instagram if you're one of the first 40. I just wanted you to know that I don't have any more in stock that haven't been purchased. So, um, but I am dying them to order as fast as I can with other stuff that's going on. So that is the um, birthday color. Anything? Sure, thank you. Um, so one of the things what I do is I post what do you want to see in each update. And one of the things that I always get is people want to see house colorways. So I have obliged this month and we have some house colorways. So these are in two skein shawl sets or two skein sets. So each house has one of each colorway whenever you order it. So it's on soft sock. Um, Slytherin has parcel tongue and into the pen seed. And Hufflepuff has Dementor's Kiss. It, ooh, kind of skein down. And Justin Loyal for the Badgers. That's how it goes. Yeah, that's how it goes. Um, uh, Ravenclaw. I don't know why I was like, why'd oh. you blink on Ravenclaw? I don't know. I'm a Ravenclaw. You're a Ravenclaw. But Ravenclaw is man with Beyond Measure and Man's Greatest Treasure. And then Gryffindor friends get this new colorway, which is a little bit different than the previous Gryffindor colorway. This is Chivalry and Daring and Butterbeer. So. This butterbeer is on DK, but I do have it on sock. I just didn't feel like grabbing it. So that is the um, house, colors. house colors. I also have a few other Harry Potter colors in stock, such as Troll in the Dungeon and Spiked Chocolate Cauldrons. A lot of things have sold out. I was surprised how well this update did. And then I have a new colorway. This is called Prophecy, which is super lightly speckled, but it's like this gorgeous purpley sort of gray. And then also new for this update is the Gilmore Girls Club colorway from March. And this, excuse me, this is Luke Steiner. So got some yellow speckles. There's some red ones in there, but they're all on the inside of the skin. There's some. Yeah, so just it's kind of more subtle. Like it's a bright blue and a cream, but the speckles are more subtle. So that is what is currently in the shop. Um, there's more than that, but I didn't grab everything because I had to put it all back. But um, I will be taking everything down for SSK probably next Monday, so a week from today. And um, you'll still be able to order the clubs, just not anything that ships immediately, so that just in case. Would they still be able to pre-order the Harry Potter? Yeah, yeah. anything that's died to order or pre-ordered is going to be available, just not the stuff that's ready to ship. Because I'm going to be taking most of it to the show. So. Uh, I think that's all we have. I think so. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to anybody who's new, and thank you to everybody who comes back. Thanks for being with us for a hundred episodes. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a lot of, it's a lot of footage to watch. <laughs> if you wanted to start from the beginning, that's a lot of, a lot of. I, I never thought we would get to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. We appreciate y'all. Um, we love the people who come up and tell us they watch the podcast that shows. That's like my favorite. That that is amazing. Um, we do appreciate you keep coming by and stopping and saying hey and and telling us what you like about the podcast. And yeah. we're always open to hear what you don't. So, um, but yeah, if you ever see us out, don't hesitate to come by and say hey. Um, but don't tell us you don't like Pearl because we're not going to like that. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's a little upsetting when people say they don't like. Nobody's ever said that, but you know. You know just because Pearl is perfect. Perfect Pearl. <laughs> but, um, yeah, come over. If you ever see us out and about, come over and say, hey, we're always happy to meet viewers. We're always happy to meet other knitters because, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are people. So, yep. Come see us at SSK. Come see us in Austin. We would love to see you. We're happy that you're watching. We're just really grateful. Yes, we and are. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.